What's good, TMG fam? It's your boy, Ellen Queen, and we back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute, man. If you ever worried about those animals that can still live on after they die or still attack you after they die, we're about to check out a video that shows those animals. This is the 10 animals that can live after death. Now, I've always heard about the snakes. You know what I'm saying? You cut their head off, you still got to be careful because they can still strike you. You ain't never heard that? Nah. Seriously? Dead serious. Oh my God. Seriously? I didn't live in the country. I did. City girl. I, I know you at did. At one point, time, I did. <laughs> I did. I was, out, I was out in the country somewhere. You walk outside, you like to see a snake on your porch, no. on, the, on the banister of nah. your steps or something. Nah, we ran from lizards and we had to swim in the canals, you know, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Miami, of course. Gator. <laughs> Like, swim in the canal if you want to. But uh, we're going to check out those videos, man. And then we're going to check out 10 weird two-headed animals. Two-headed animals. Okay. <laughs> That's all you got to say. It's okay. If you're new <laughs> to the channel, man, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, man, and join the fam, TMG fam for life. Y'all ready? With that being said, let's go. Immortality has long fascinated us humans. Numerous people have searched for the secret of living forever for centuries. But it seems like we've been beaten to it by our animal friends, to an extent at least. Today we will be looking at 10 animals that can live after death. Make sure you stay tuned for number one, as this creature just might be immortal. Number 10. Cockroaches. <laughs> it shouldn't come as a surprise. Really, we went there first. <laughs> we went I there first. <laughs> For real, you always hear the saying though: <laughs> cockroaches will live forever. <laughs> They'll live, outlive us all. Oh my gosh! Guys, that these tiny little bugs would make this list. Cockroaches are infamous. Okay, I'm sorry. This is an know. insect, right? <laughs> it's not an animal. I was expecting something else, not a roach. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I was thrown off too. I was, I was like, like what? <laughs> for their tenacity, and are often cited as the most likely survivors of a nuclear war. Some even claim they can live without their heads. Well, surprise, surprise. They can live without their heads. In fact, they can go on living for two weeks. To understand how these bugs can survive decapitation, first we must understand how we fragile humans couldn't. First of all, humans bleed, and when a man's head comes off, he bleeds a lot. Yes. Cockroaches don't have that problem, though. They have an open circulatory system, which translates to little to no blood pressure. So if their head pops off, the wound just closes naturally due to clotting. And secondly, and probably obviously, human heads kind of hold a very important part of our body, our brain. Right. And without it, humans will not function. Eating, drinking, and breathing are all impossible without the head. But cockroaches, on the other hand, don't need their heads to breathe, as they do this process through little holes located on their bodies, called spiracles. Although a headless cockroach will die of starvation eventually, it's going to take them weeks for them to do so. Number 9. I could have did without number 10. I really could have did without number 10. That's disgusting. I could have did without number 10. He, he, he really let me down on number 10. I could have did without that. I'm sitting here just like thinking about anything I ate. Bees. That's nasty. Wow. This might sound like a comp out to you. No, bees die and they stay dead. However, there is a reason why they appear on this list. Because even though a bee might be dead, it can still sting you. Not in the way that you think, of course. Dead bees obviously can't go flying around and actively sting you. It's that their stinging parts and more importantly the venom delivery system will still work even if the bee is long dead. When a bee stings, the sting detaches from its body, leaving it embedded into the skin of its victim. Attached to this thing is a tiny organ that both contains the bee venom and a tiny muscle that pumps the venom out. Due to the simple physiology of bees, these actions are not controlled by the bee's simple brain, but rather by involuntary impulses. So if you think that you're safe picking up a dead bee, think again. Number 8. Dang. Chickens. Chicken. There is truth to the expression running around like a headless chicken, after all. Yeah, ask any farmer and they'll tell you. Chickens can still run. Okay, this is where, you know, sometimes we get a lot of comments. Oh my god, you guys should do the premium because we get, you know, um, you get the ads, <laughs> the ads and all this. We have it. I have it. Still get the ads. That crap does not work. <laughs> We're canceling it. I just it. had to. We're canceling I had to it. Get that a little bit right there. Okay. 
who run around with their heads cut off. And there's a very simple reason for this, and it's not because chickens are zombies. No, the reason is, believe it or not, human error. This error happens to be a butcher's error, to be more specific. You see, a chicken's central nervous system is very different from us humans. Some basic bodily functions are controlled not by the brain itself, but by certain parts of the brain's stem. So what does this all mean? Well, the butcher chomps the chicken's head to high, most of the time it's just the forebrain of the chicken that comes off with its head, leaving the brain stem and the cerebellum quite intact. In fact, if the butcher also misses the jugular, not only will the chicken continue to move, it sometimes can still breathe. Of course, it eventually starves to death, but there is one special case that a chicken survived 18 whole months without its head. Number seven. What? A chicken survived. Of course, it eventually starves to death, but there is one special case that a chicken survived 18 whole months without its head. I thought that's what he said. Yes, that's what he said. 18 whole months? That's when you would think that something's wrong with that chicken. Like, I don't even want to eat that chicken. Yeah, like. That chicken's possessed. Something's not right. I feel like now when you eat something, it should come with like a whole, like, you know what I mean? You should be able to do a, a, a bio, bag, yeah, like yeah, a car bag. Like car bag. <laughs> it should come with a car bag to let you know, you no. know what I mean? How was it killed? How long did it take for it to die? Months. Like, that's a long time with no food and nothing like. I see why everybody going vegan. Like, when you hear stuff like this, man, <laughs> it make you, I see why everybody going vegan. That's weird. Number seven. The octopus. I'll eat that. I'm pretty sure that you've seen videos online where an octopus, after being chopped up, continues to move. In fact, in certain Asian countries, eating fresh octopus is a deadly delicacy. Ew. It's not really the octopus that survives after being chopped up, but rather eight wily arms that continue to move about. And it's these eight arms that usually get stuck in someone's throat, resulting into a very bad day. The reason why octopus's arms oh, maintain mobility hey, even after. No! I'm getting up. Like, no. Who eating that? Mm-mm. What you put that on my table for? Like, nah, we're gonna have a problem, bro. It's still moving. And you've heard the stories about people swallowing it and like the tentacles latching onto you, like your your esophagus or your throat or whatever, and like almost suffocating you or strangling you. I ain't heard like the little suction cups. I have friends. You ain't gotta worry about that ever happening to me because I ain't I eating it. I have friends that like this. For real? But they eat it fried though, so I, oh, they should be dead by then. Only time I've ever did something with an octopus was use it to fish. I think me and my pops used it to fish. That was it. Ew. That's it. Squid used it to fish. After being chopped off is quite fascinating. Oh, look at it. It's, it's because their central back. nervous system is quite unique. You see, most of an octopus's nerve cells, two out of three of them in fact, can be found not in the brain where you would expect them to be, but rather in its tentacles. And these arms can continue reacting to stimuli even if they are no longer connected to the main brain. In fact, they remain responsive even after the octopus has been long dead and the arms suffered. Researchers in St. George University in London conducted extensive experiments on this phenomenon. After the animals were euthanized, their arms were removed and kept in chilled seawater for up to an hour until they were ready for experimentation. Some arms were suspended vertically, and others were laid out horizontally. They then pinched them. The suspended arms recoiled from the unpleasant stimulus by shortening and curling in a corkscrew shape within one second. Horizontal arms also moved away from the undesirable stimuli, many bending in a sort of contrived joint toward the top. These movements can happen up for a- I can tell you right now, I'm not cleaning that. You better keep it down. You chose this video. I just had to burp, bro. Okay. I just had to burp. Okay. <laughs> a week after the octopus's death. Number six. Salamanders. If you're gonna come up with a list of animals that stubbornly continue to live even after apparent death, you'll be hard pressed not to include the salamander. This animal has always been synonymous to long life and immortality. It's even revered by people who believe in magic, believing that the amazing regenerative powers of this animal can be considered paranormal. Salamanders have the uncanny ability to regenerate any part of its body that has been chopped off. More amazingly, these regrown parts actually function the same as, or in some cases, even better than the original parts. This is mainly because of a special protein oh. found in salamanders, which facilitates the replication of cells. This protein can also be found in humans, but in smaller quantities, and they help us heal from our wounds. So does this mean that we can soon regenerate severed limbs? 
well, we're not quite there yet. But scientists are continuing to study salamanders and how their unique ability can benefit humans in the future. Something they're not telling us. It's something they're not telling us. I'm telling you, they're doing experiments on humans somewhere right now you, with salamander blood. It's something they're not telling us. I'm telling y'all. Okay, don't listen to me. It's a mixed half of salamander human running around here somewhere wondering why he, he got like... It's too early on this day to be going through this with me right now. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Number five, frogs. It has been discovered that frogs continue to move around even when they're brain dead, or to put it more accurately, with its brain missing. This experiment was brought about when scientists discovered reports of various headless animals continuing to move about. That's very impressive on its own, but let's face it, there's only so much any creature without a head can do. So what happens if you leave the frog's head intact, but take out its brain, you ask? Well, thanks to the let's chop out its brain and see what the hell happens approach to science taken by 19th century neurologist David Ferrier, we can tell you. What? A headed but brainless frog actually behaves very similarly to a frog with its gray matter perfectly intact. If you turn it upside down, it will ride itself. If you pinch its feet, it will hop away. If you put it in water, it will swim to the side and climb out. And perhaps most disturbing of all, it'll even croak contentedly if you stroke its back. The factor that results in frogs' zombie-like tendencies is the power of the reflex reaction, which fires the necessary electrical impulses that cause a muscle to expand or contract. Number 4. Flies. Yo. You've probably seen David Blaine resurrect dead flies just by touching them, and no, this is not because the magician really has supernatural powers. Flies can survive freezing temperatures and go into some kind of suspended animation. What you really see David doing is thawing the frozen fly using his own body heat. When the insect fully thaws, the fly then flies away. Seriously? He duped us with a frozen fly? <laughs> Yo, people are just... This is weird. And you chose this. I didn't chose that. TMG fam chose it. Okay. But this amazing ability to survive freezing temperatures is not why the humble fly makes it to this list. Female flies will live for several days after they have been decapitated. Such beheaded females assume an upright stance comparable to that of a normal fly, and can do and engage in complex actions such as preening, flying, and under duress, walking. Even more amazingly, males will court decapitated females. That's right, chop off a female fly's head and not much changes, really. If anything, it serves to make the fly's behavior more human-like. The males still want to have sex with her, while she in turn treats their sexual advances as noxious foreign stimuli. Number three, turtles. Did he just say what I, what I think he just, like flies are nasty. Bro. Yo, yo y'all want to call male humans dog? A male fly is just sick, bro. He don't care. Okay. Head, no head. Bro, <laughs> hey man, flies are uh, nasty. Hey. <laughs> Number three, turtles. Toy turtles. The hearts of fish, reptiles, birds, and mammals alike have their own pacemaker cells that take over when the signals from the brainstem are not coming through for some reason, which ensures that the heart still functions for a while, even when the brain does not. Now the turtle takes the term for a while to a whole new level, and this is because from their heart's viewpoint, being cut off from the oxygen and nutrients usually supplied by the blood is just a normal day at the office. Because these animals can dive for a long time. How long? They'll try 5,000 hours in the case of the loggerhead musk turtle. Yeah, you heard that right. That was a five followed by three zeros and they survived that long by what oxygen they can take up from the water via their skin, throat, and butt end, as well as their body's amazing potential for producing energy without oxygen. Their hearts have their own fuel stash and they just won't give up until every last fill up of that has been used up. Now it's time for the day's best pick. Today we're gonna focus on an animal so ferocious it can still kill you with its head chopped off. Perfect for Halloween, honestly. Number two, snakes. People's reaction when faced with a highly venomous snake can be boiled down into three categories. Running away, freezing on the spot, and oh god, kill it. Chop its head off. 
While indeed chopping the thing's head off may seem the most feasible way to avoid getting bitten, the truth is that that may not be the case. A snake's head, a vessel for its fangs and deadly poison sacs, oh! still have the ability to bite you and deliver deadly venom, even if it's no longer attached to the rest of its body. The snake has heat-sensitive pits at either side of its face, which it uses to detect threats. And let's face it, if you're close enough for your body heat to be detected, you're close enough to be considered a threat. These heat-sensitive pits are capable of detecting a threatening presence for hours after death, which means the snake may continue to defend itself, zombie style. And yes, this even applies if the body is no longer attached. I saved the best for last, but first, I- That's crazy. So? You already knew that though, didn't you? Told you, man, I've heard about snakes, but just actually seen it. I've always heard about it, but I've never seen it. That snake That's head was crazy. off and he was still like striking. That's what it meant when you said it. You just didn't get the visual. Yeah, I just. It was a little bit late. That's what he said. Yeah. That's what you said. Yeah, but I didn't see it. Seeing it is just. It's okay to say it though. Right, right. Flatworms. Are you familiar with the old wives tale about how earthworms reproduce? It states that if you cut an earthworm in half, two earthworms will form from the severed halves. Of course, this has since been proven to be completely hokum. However, substitute the earthworm with a flatworm, and then this old wives tale suddenly becomes a very true disturbing story. Dang. Flatworms, or planarians, are known as masters of regeneration. They can rebuild any part of their bodies after amputation. If one is cut in half, the head portion grows a tail, and the tail portion grows a head. Cut it into 20 pieces and 20 new worms, each an exact copy of the first, are created. This has been exploited by Nottingham University scientists who have created a colony of more than 20,000 worms. And guess what? They're all from one original, whose bodies and organs do not appear to age. They are confident a single worm which did not divide would live forever, unless it catches an infection or another illness. Which deathless animal is your favorite? None. None. But I didn't know he could, like, he cut them up in 20 different ways and created 20 new worms. That's insane. Polycephaly is a condition where an animal is born Whoa, with two heads. Yeah, yeah, that's the two-headed part. Some cultures think of it as a blessing, while others think it is a curse. Or if you're playing Fallout, a two-headed cow is pretty much normal, actually. Either way, no matter what people think, one thing we can all agree on is that creatures with this condition are truly weird. Today we're going to be looking at 10 weird two-headed animals. Better make sure you stay until number one. That entry is adorableness times two. Eh? Yeah, buns? Yeah, okay. Number 10. Squirt and Crush. There have been quite a few cases of turtles with two heads, but most of them are one of the small varieties. It is so much rarer to find these kinds of mutations on larger species. So when a baby loggerhead turtle was discovered with two heads just a couple of months ago, the news stirred quite a bit of buzz. A sea turtle patrol on Hilton Island in South Carolina discovered an extraordinarily rare two-headed loggerhead hatchling, which was desperately trying to keep up with its brothers and sisters who were on their way to the sea. It was I would imagine it would happen just like those, like the girls. Remember the two-headed girl? I would imagine just like that when it's inside, instead it was two, but it fused together to be one, you know what I mean? That's what I would think. Very alive and energetic, but it had a deformed shell, making movement extremely difficult. The people who discovered the twins whom they affectionately named Squirt and Crush say that this is an extremely Squirt rare finding in the area, with the last discovery happening 15 long years ago. Turtle hatchlings already have a very difficult time in the wild, where only 1 in 1,000 are expected to survive to adulthood. If this hatchling wasn't discovered, its chances of survival in the wild are next to none. Aww. It's a good thing that the twins were discovered. This should at least give them a better chance at survival. Number 9. The Two-Headed Cardinal Birds are some of the rarest animals found with two heads. It must be because that any animal with this mutation really have little to no chance of surviving out in the wild. So when this bird was found in western Massachusetts, it was indeed quite a rare find. What makes this find even rarer and admittedly a little weirder is the fact that not only that this bird has two heads, it had two beaks as well. April Britt from Northampton noticed that cardinals had been flying around her property. Finding this strange, she went out to investigate what was happening. During her investigation, she spotted this tiny bird on the lower branches in one of the trees. Although still young, it was quite clear that the bird was already a couple of weeks old, and it was covered in juvenile feathers. The find even made it to the local news, and Britt was interviewed regarding her find. 
Unfortunately, the bird is not expected to live that long. Dang. Experts say that due to its deformity, even flying was an impossible feat for the poor little thing. Number eight. Number eight. The first of its kind. While two-headed turtles and birds are quite common, well, relatively speaking, this next entry on our list truly is the first of its kind. Back in 2017, a Dutch fisherman fishing in the North Sea caught something truly weird in his nets. Along with this catch of the day, he found a deformed animal, which was clearly just an infant. Unfortunately, the creature was no longer alive when it was fished out of the ocean. Thinking that it was illegal to keep such an animal, he subsequently threw it back into the sea, but not before taking a few photos of it. Upon examination of the photos, experts came to the conclusion that what the fisherman had found was a baby two-headed arbor porpoise. According to Erwin Kompaji of the National Museum of History in Rotterdam, says that conjoined twins in whales and dolphins are extremely rare. Wow. He was only aware of nine other published cases worldwide. Number wow. seven. Wow. And they keep wow. saying they done found everything. They, they have not found everything in the ocean. They keep proving and you don't my see point. Megalodon, a Megalodon. Okay. Bucky the calf. Lucky the two-headed calf was born on a farm in Kentucky owned by husband and wife Stan and Brandy McCubbin. The couple said that in the seven years that they've been running the farm, they have never encountered an animal quite like Lucky. Technically speaking, Lucky doesn't have two heads, but rather has two faces, with two mouths, two noses, and four eyes. Lucky, however, only seemed to have one brain. As when the McCubbins tried to feed one mouth, the other mouth moves in unison. This makes Lucky quite an even rarer case of polycephaly. Wow. A veterinary team from the University of Illinois grew interested in Lucky and was interested to give her an operation that would potentially prolong her life. The McCubbins were even able to raise $1,200 for the operation. Unfortunately, wow. just one week before the operation, she suddenly stopped eating and sadly passed away. Dang. She lived 108 days, making her the longest surviving calf born with two faces, with the previous record holding only about 40 days. Wow. Number Dang. six. Nice. The goat from Kazakhstan. Okay. From one kind of livestock, we move on to another, just on the other side of the world. All the way in a small farm in Kazakhstan, a very healthy baby goat was born. Healthy, but with one small problem. It had two faces. Much like Lucky the Calf that we met earlier on, this kid was born with two faces on one head and seems to be flourishing. In fact, a viral video was done rounds on the internet showing it to be very active. It was even- Like, what would you do if you stumble upon a two-headed something, animal or anything like that? Like, what are you, what, what are you doing? Are you going to check on it and make sure it's- I, 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 don't think so. I, I didn't think so. No, I know you very well. I'm going to freak out. <laughs> one animal with one head is enough. You know, and if it's, it has a double head, then I'm like, oh my God, Lucifer is coming or something. Like, I'm just like, no. Um, mm -mm. Lucifer? <laughs> yep. It's been suckling from its mother without any issues. Now, although it wasn't expected for livestock with these kinds of mutations rarely live to maturity, there were very high hopes for this kid. However, unfortunately, much like the other entries on our list, this story has a sad ending. Aww. Its mother, who initially allowed it to suckle from her, suddenly stopped doing it and even tried to run away from fright. Even Aww. so, the farmer didn't separate the mother and the kid. Then one night, the mother trampled the kid accidentally while trying to run away from it. A very sad ending indeed, which robbed us of the opportunity to see one of these amazing and admittedly weird animals full grown. Aww. <sighs> Rest Dang. in peace, Cody. Rest in peace. Number five, the two-headed dragon. Dragons are, as far as we know, creatures of myth. No evidence of the existence of dragons have ever been unearthed, much less a two-headed one. While a two-headed dragon wouldn't be so out of place in a fantasy novel or a video game, we're obviously not talking about an actual dragon here. But it's a fact that a two-headed dragon does exist. It's alive and well and belongs to a man who is in the Guinness Book of World Records for owning the largest collection of two-headed animals. That's a very oddly specific entry, but hey, more power to him. Right. Todd Ray, which is incidentally also a Grammy-winning record producer, is an avid collector of two-headed creatures and his specimens of two-headed bearded dragons seem to be the crown jewel of his collection. Oh, wow. And yes, you heard right, specimens. He doesn't own only one of them. In 2010, he acquired Lefty and Poncho, and then in 2012, he acquired a second specimen, which he aptly named Jekyll and Hyde. The reason why is because Jekyll shows a more subdued behavior compared to its conjoined twin brother Hyde. 
Having two specimens of two-headed bearded dragons may seem excess to you, but that is only the tip of the iceberg. Ray is also a proud owner of the only specimen of a three-headed turtle. Unfortunately, the third head turtle is the only reason why I didn't make the list. You know, not to discriminate, but two heads only, three heads a crowd. Oh, I was about to say, where's the third head? I couldn't see it, but then when they parted a little bit, you seen a little tiny one in the middle? That's crazy. That dude needs to be, he needs a psyche valve. Why are you collecting all these? Cause, cause it's, it's, it's unique and he might They fit. say musicians are like weird, bro. Like, like it makes sense. You know, him. It does. Kanye. You. No. Hmm. Number four. Lambs, lambs, and more lambs. Lambs seem to be the most common animals to have polycephaly. A quick Google search will show you multiple hits of this phenomenon involving lambs. As recently as 2017, a two-headed lamb was born in New South Wales. The farmer that owns it says it came as a shock to him as the lamb was born hind legs first. The poor lamb broke its leg as the farmer was trying to pull it out, but it recovered fully. No word if it reached maturity, though. Although earlier in 2008, another two-headed lamb was born at a refugee camp in the West Bank and was considered holy by farmers in the camp. Two-headed lambs were also a staple in sideshows and traveling carnivals during their heyday in the U.S. P.T. Barnum's Traveling Circus is extremely famous for showcasing such oddities, oftentimes creating ludicrous and fictional backstories. Number 3. Really? Two-headed little pigs. A farmer in Luzhou, Sichuan, China was both startled and proud to discover that one of his prized sows gave birth to a litter of healthy piglets. Now, how would you feel to know that your bacon that you got one day came from a two-headed pig? You know what? I feel like certain things we're not supposed to know. Let's just keep it like that, okay? I'm just asking. Let's just keep it like I that. I feel like you should know that. I feel like I would want to know that my bacon... Your chicken, once, because you love chicken. Like, once they cut the head off, it just ran around for another 18 months. I don't want to eat that. You want to know that, though. I want to know that. I want to know that you're sitting in front of me, a plate of chicken that... it. We tried to kill him 12 months, a year ago. He just now died, so now you're getting... I don't want that. He possessed something inside of him, I believe in transfer of energy, that I don't want inside of me. You know what I'm saying? It's just... Bitch included one that was quite special. If that it wasn't already weird. obvious enough why this piglet was special, well, it was born with two heads. To be more specific, it doesn't have two heads, but rather two faces conjoined in one head. It had two mouths, two snouts, and three eyes. Quite predictably, it quickly became a local celebrity in that small town in China. The farmer named Zhang Guyan said that he had been raising the sow for three years before she gave birth to the pigs, including the two-headed piglet. He also added that he fed all of his animal ragweed and he didn't feed anything special to the sow. Although he was offered the equivalent of $300 for the piglet, the farmer refused to sell. Apparently, the farmer's son fell in love with it and wanted to keep it as a prized pet. Two-headed pigs seem to be not all that uncommon in China. For instance, in 2015, a two-headed piglet was found abandoned in front of a Buddhist temple in Tianjin, while another one was born in Chongqing just a couple of months earlier. Now it's time for the day's best pick. Crazy. Today we're going to be looking at something that you wouldn't want to see even if it only had one head. Mm -mm. Number two. Bears and snakes. Today's best pick shows a photo containing two animals, which both have two heads. And both are also quite terrifying if you encounter them out in the wild. Oh, wow. The only difference between the two is one of them is real and the other one isn't. Care to take a guess on which one is real? The bear's fake. If your fake. answer is the bear, then you better get your eyes checked. That. I figured the bear was fake. Snakes I've heard of before, but the bear, I was like, nah, that's gotta be fake. That one is clearly a manipulated image. Furthermore, there have been no documented instances of two-headed bears anywhere. Another thing, all animals with polycephaly rarely reach adulthood. So finding a fully grown two-headed bear is purely in the realms of fiction. For now, at least, hopefully. Two-headed snakes, on the other hand, is a totally different story altogether. Although rare, there have been numerous documented cases of two-headed snake sightings from all over the world. I'm pretty sure Todd Ray would have a couple in his menagerie. Anyway, the photo you are seeing is a two-headed albino melon snake, and its photo has been circulated around the internet for quite a few years now. In any case, the photo has been examined by experts and it has been determined to be 100% legit. So, two-headed snakes are real. Two-headed bears are not. Got it? 
Good. I saved the best for last, but first, I have a quick challenge that takes only 5 seconds to complete. If you can leave a like and subscribe within the next 5 seconds. Bears. There are literally millions of cat photos and videos on the internet. It does make one think of the ah! internet's real purpose is to propagate ah! images of these ah! cute little critters. And although maybe some dog people and spider people and lizard people and people who aren't cat people <laughs> might disagree, back. cats are really cute, and people who think that they are increase every day. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that this kitten's video quickly became a viral sensation, especially when you take into account that it wow. is quite a cute yet weird condition. Betty B was born in 2017 to a house cat in Eastern Cape, South Africa. She is one of three kittens in a litter, but Betty B has a unique trait. She was born with two faces. Betty B's double face makes it difficult for her to nurse, which meant she was at risk of starving to death. So the rescuer who wishes to remain anonymous started to tube feed the kitten. Initially, this furry little fellow was thriving, but much like all the other entries on this list, it had a sad ending. It didn't survive, dying only 16 days after birth. Aww. Which two an animal would you like to keep as a pet? Let us know in the comment section down below. That would have had to be the kitten. Nah. Which one you would have had? Nah, I got kids. I'm good. <laughs> if you had to pick one. Mm-mm. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, y'all get at us and let us know what y'all thought of the videos, man. Two-headed animals and animals that uh, can live on after death or after having their heads chopped off. Crazy. So if you chop a snake head off, you kill him. Be careful, because he can still kill you. That's crazy, right? Just saying that is just crazy. Y'all get at us in the comment section. Let us know what y'all think, man. Leave a like, share the video, subscribe, and stick around and stay tuned to the next reaction, man. We out. Peace, y'all. Stay solid. Hey.